This sim racing shifter feels straight out of a supercar, and you can build it at home for less than 40 euros. Every shift and every movement is precise, it has zero play and the perfect amount of stiffness. Yeah, let's build it! Before starting the build, let's quickly go over the design and mechanism to better understand how this shifter actually works. The shift lever rotates around this ball joint and is brought to center by these two spring-loaded centering arms. As you can see the shift lever runs in this groove, that limits uh, its front to back movement to three fixed positions, into which the lever nicely snaps, thanks to this indexer guide and the bearings pressing on it. This provides an amazing feedback that is also highly tunable by simply modifying the indexer profile. With the mechanism sorted, we can start the build by tracing the mounting holes on the base using this 3D printed template. This is important since the various components need to be precisely positioned to make the shifter work properly. For the base I used the shifter plate that I've made when I've built the sim racing cockpit, go watch that video if you haven't, but you can simply use a 10mm plywood sheet and you'll be good to go. To make the front to back movement battery smooth, a 100mm linear rail is used and we can screw it to the base before mounting the slider on top of it, using two M3 countersunk screws. Next, the indexer can be pressed in place, making sure that this sharp corner faces like so, before moving on to assembling the indexing arm. To do so, a section of M6 screw is used to hold 5 12 by 4 mm bearings, mounting them between the left and the right arms. This assembly can then be mounted to the main pivot which was previously installed and a couple of stiff springs can be hooked on each side. These springs will later press the bearings against the indexer and provide the needed motion and feedback. Moving on we can start assembling the main structure by screwing 4 bolts in these holes. These bolts had their head cut off, leaving a 45 degrees end, the purpose of which you will later understand. To screw them in, I've used this old drill chuck, but you can just use pliers. In any case, you will need to screw them in so that when mounting the two supports to the base, the screws leave a gap of no less than 1 cm, and are centered relative to the guide below when in the middle position. The two supports we just built can be connected together using two lengths of 8mm steel rod that gets press fit in the appropriate holes. At this point you might have realized what's the function of the four bolts we added before, in fact they provide the H pattern that will separate each gear and will lock the lever in place when a gear is inserted. With this assembly completed, we can screw it to the base and tighten the two springs we added before, by screwing them to the appropriate holes using two M6 bolts. Moving on to building the shifter lever, an M8 threaded rod is used, but since it will rub directly against the screws we added before when inserting each gear, it will wear down super fast, especially if we leave the bare thread contacting the other metal surfaces. To help with that I took an extra spring of the same type we used before, cut one end off and screw it on the threaded rod, leaving about 6mm of thread sticking out. I've then ground it flat to provide for a very smooth surface that will wear down very slowly, lasting for years with minimal wear. The few millimeters of thread sticking out will be needed to screw the rod to this sliding block that will run inside the guide and allow for the needed movements while also keeping the whole shift lever from rotating. We can then proceed by adding the strengthening brace and assembling the two centering arms which consists of two 3D printed components connected by another section of 8mm steel rods that gets pressed in the appropriate holes. They can then be located in place and screwed on, making sure not to tighten them too much to guarantee a smooth rotation. These arms obviously need to also be spring-loaded to allow the shift lever to snap back to the center. For that, a long M5 screw can be screwed here, making sure to hook the spring before tightening it all the way. 
It's important that you use a socket head screw here, since its head actually acts as the end stop for the spring movement, by resting onto this plastic piece. The other end of the spring can instead be hooked to a section of M6 threaded rod that gets slotted in this hole. Continuing, we can add the ball joint around which the shift lever will pivot by screwing it in place using an M8 bolt and adding a couple of nuts to keep the lever from moving up and down. Last step is to add the shift knob, nicely finishing the mechanical side of this build. To match the metal 3D printed components of the pedals and the steering wheel, I had PCBWay 3D print this amazing shift knob out of aluminum. PCBWay is my go-to service for on-demand, high-quality manufacturing. They offer amazing quality at low prices, with fast turnaround times and a wide range of manufacturing capabilities, from PCB making, CNC machining, 3D printing and more. Check them out at the link below. Moving on with the shifter, we need to sort out the electronics and sensors to correctly read the lever position and transmit the signals to the PC. This is the perfect job for an Arduino Leonardo, which in this case is the one that is already controlling the pedals, since I can just connect the needed buttons to it and have a single board controlling both the pedals and the shifter at the same time. But you can obviously use a standalone board if you don't already have one set up. In order to read which gear is selected, we can simply use a bunch of limit switches, but before continuing, I wanted to thank FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. With their C7 ergonomic chair, you will be productive like never before, with an ergonomic posture that will please your back even in long sitting sessions. The infinite adjustments available allow you to always get the best sitting position and comfort, and the competitive price will also make your wallet very happy. Purchase it at the link below. Back to installing the limit switches, there is a total of 4, 2 of which can be installed so that they are triggered by the front and back movement of the slider. One of them is mounted here, while the other one can be installed on the side, so that it gets triggered when the linear block hits it like so. The remaining two can be installed here to be triggered by the side-to-side -side movement of the shift knob. This configuration allows to assign a specific switch combination to each gear, allowing the microcontroller to exactly know what gear is selected, by reading which switches are pressed and which aren't. Connecting them to the Arduino Leonardo following this uh, wiring diagram completes the hardware and after some quick coding we can finally test it. This uh, I think is the most satisfying build that I've ever done and it's definitely the first one that already works amazingly in its first iteration. The feeling is truly superb and it is exactly like uh, I imagine a supercar shifter to feel like. It is sharp, extremely precise, it has zero play in any direction and the lever is rock solid when it's in gear, leaving no room for miss shifts or anything else that will break your immersion when driving. And please, don't get me started on the sound it makes. The stiffness is spot on for my liking, quite hard but not too much, and still you can easily adjust it by changing the spring rate. In the same way you can play with a side-to-side -side stiffness and bounce by changing the spring stiffness. The best area for adjustment though is the indexer itself, in fact you can modify the profile to your liking to achieve a completely different feeling and resistance. If you decide to download the files for the shifter, you will in fact find the step file for this component, so that you will easily be able to modify it in your preferred CAD software. It can even be made V-shaped to precisely simulate a sequential shifter, satisfying the need of every sim racer and driver, providing the highest amount of adjustability possible. The possibilities are truly endless and it's up to you to build it and play around with it to find the best configuration that suits you. If you want to purchase the files for this shifter, they are available at the link below for a price of just 15 euros. 
and with the purchase you will also get access to the Arduino code to make it work properly, including the circuit diagram and the detailed parts list, with every component needed down to all the nuts and bolts. This shifter truly made the sim racing more fun, since I found myself enjoying uh, driving old manual cars a lot. Because of that a manual shifter was much needed. If you liked this project you can watch my other sim racing related videos in this playlist and subscribe because you definitely don't want to miss what's coming up in the next sim racing project. I will catch you in the next one!